Hello there. You may know me as the guy who likes building garbage, but I also like building other things. I've had this keyboard for about 4 years now. It's a Steel Series Apex M750. It's a really great keyboard for the price with some nice RGB options. But since I don't care for my equipment, it's been covered in grime and dust. What's worse is that some keys don't even work anymore. So, I'm building a new custom keyboard. There are many custom keyboards on the market, but curiously, most kits come in smaller form factors like 60 to 75%, whereas I'm a completely normal human person who relies on his numpad to speedrun Adobe Premiere Pro 2023. And sadly, the 104 key options are few and far between. Fortunately, the latest custom keyboard superstar Keychron has a couple 100% keyboard in stock for purchase. I bought one of these boards from a third party during a sale, a fully assembled version of the V6. I wanted to show the keyboard's accessories, but I figured anyone that interested in the V6 would be smart enough to just read the store page instead. So let's just look at today's subject. It has 108 keys, comes with Keychron's own OSA profile double shot PBT keycaps, 4 extra buttons at the top right, Keychron K Pro Red switches, and a very shiny knob, perfect for any British viewers. Welcome to Bottom Game. Because this video title is I'm now legally obligated to customize this keyboard. It comes with this piece of foam, which we'll get to use later. But first, we'll need to take it apart. Every Keychron keyboard comes with a switch and keycap puller so you can hurt your fingers while indulging in the illusion that you are given free tools. To get to the inside of the keyboard, we'll pull out everything we can. There are 108 keys and therefore 108 keycaps, 108 switches, and of course, one knob head. Now with all the switches removed, we can see that the stabilizers are pre-looped, which means you can be a lazy piece of shit and not loop your steps, and no one will ever be able to tell. I'm taking out the screws in the wrong order because I didn't read the fucking menu, available on a Keychron website, but also because the guide is using the V3 as the example, so I wouldn't know where the screws are on a V6 anyway. <laughs> The screwdrivers I'm using also came with the keyboard, but you can just use a small Phillips head screwdriver and Allen key as well. There are 12 Phillips head screws on the front and 8 cap screws on the back. The top cover comes right off and then the PCB with no wires attached because it doesn't have a battery. Obviously it's a Hotswap PCB because of the 108 switches I just pulled out and it states itself as being QMK compatible, that's because it is. Did you know that there's a literary device called Foreshadow? It comes pre-installed with plate foam and a steel plate, which gives it the majority of its weight. There's also a very thick piece of silicone at the bottom of the tray, which probably absorbs the sound quite well. But I'm still legally obligated to mod it. One of the cheapest ways to mod a keyboard is of course applying the tape mod, which is self-explanatory. It reduces the pinging sound by filtering out the higher sound frequencies, but the more popular type of tape is pretty expensive. Luckily, we have tape mod at home. This masking tape came in about 2 US dollars, which is 5 times cheaper than 3M blue tape, and is a very non-bourgeois option. I applied 2 layers of tape because the tolerance is not very large between the PCB and the silicone pad, and trimmed away any excess tape. For the screw holes, I pushed the whole PCB against the tray. This made the standoffs create impressions on the tape, so they are easy to spot and poke. On a completely unrelated note, this tiny piece of plastic fell out of the PCB, and I think I broke the dip switch. To fill in the rest of the space, if you remember the moment that is ago, it comes with this piece of foam which we'll get to use later. The passage of time has happened, and a piece of foam shall be slaughtered, fitted, and impaled. The foam should provide additional cushioning and reduce echoing inside the tray. It should stay nicely beneath the PCB as it is in the void where the standoffs reside. 
Now, if you like this kind of keyboard content, remember to not subscribe to this YouTube channel. Do not, because I'm a normal human person who does not need more than two keyboards at a time. Since I ripped out all the rest switches, I'm clearly not going to be using them. In fact, I'm not even a member of the formidable linear Yakuza. So here's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna brown. These are the Gatoron Baby Kangaroo Tactile Switches. I originally wanted to go full cock and get Kyo Box Brown, because if you've watched my Cyberdeck video, you'll remember that I got the Box Navies and they were amazing. But then I went on the internet and the people on the screen told me Box Brown bad. So I went back onto the internet and people on the screen told me Baby Kangaroo good. So now I'm regurgitating this claim to you without basis or personal experience. After being a seller for a corporation for zero dollars, we should start inserting the switches into the keyboard. You all know how it works. Let's just sprinkle some of this baby kangaroos and then some of this foam. Maybe they use a manual, reverse the polarity of the switch puller, and some trash just for good measure. And now let's slow and steady take the keyboard out. Psych, idiot! It's always just been manual labor. There is no magic, there is no Santa Claus, and there is no King of England. The original keycaps that came with the V6 are in Keychron's own OSA profile, and OEM hides keycap in a spherical profile. But it doesn't have something that I require in a keycap. You may be wondering what it may be. So let's see what keycaps we're using. Actually, let me just put this knob hat back in. Now, let's see the keycaps. We're a little bit short on time, so let's just do this the quick way. These are the double shot PBT pudding keycap set from Techware. For my everyday use, I'm adamant on using shine through keycaps because I work at night a lot and having illumination in the legends makes them a lot better to see under artificial light. Turning it on for the first time, the legends are a bit dark because of the self-facing LEDs, but it's still legible and a diffuse light emanating from the bottom of the caps mix up for it. I did come across this XVX Santa Legend keycaps afterwards though, and I've seen reviews saying they feel better than the OEM profile. Fi 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 the first thing I did after connecting it to the PC is going to the FIA website and test every button to make sure I did everything right because I'm not an idiot who would not test its setup and complain about it on the internet afterwards. And turns out, it just works because I did everything right. This is pretty good, but I also want a very slightly more control over my RGB lighting, so I tried reading up on file, a QMK fork that comes with a GUI. What the fuck? I thought it would be as easy as doing it in fear, but it turns out Fio doesn't just let you do it in a GUI either. Ashamed, I'm going to commit the greatest crime towards myself. And after understanding the basics of C and learning how to code, I can finally have my lock keys and layer keys light up when they are active. I also code it so the lighting won't turn off all the way in this lighting mode. Now there's more control. Yippee! Also, the keen eye among you may have noticed that I've changed film locations several times. You can read all about it on my Kofi page. Yeah, big change. Anyway, we've all been waiting for this moment. Time for the sound test.
these baby kangaroo switches are actually really good to type on. If you're switching from a brown like the cherries, you may feel the switches being harder to press down, and it may fatigue your pingor for the first few days of using it. But after your fingers are no longer weak, you get to feel a solid tactile bump, which is of my liking. Another thing that makes me like the baby kangaroos and in extension tactile switches so much is the mechanical actuation sounds. The tape mod and foam mod combined reduce the higher frequencies and distinguishes itself from clickies like the box navies. It also doesn't sound scratchy because it is pre-looped. Now despite having the foam and the silicone pad, the keyboard is still quite loud when typing. It doesn't really bother me though. I practically punch my keys with my fingers with every single keystroke, and with the force of my stroking, there's bound to be some loud noises. What does bother me a bit is the fact that some of the switches sound a little bit sticky. You can hear the loop getting separated on return with a few keys. It's not a deal breaker and it's not noticeable when I'm wearing headphones. It's not a deal breaker and it's not noticeable when I'm wearing headphones or working. But I just think I'd mention it in case any of you want to buy the switches as well. Also, the switch isn't strong enough to return a spacebar. I switched this one out for a sky long chocolate rose that I had lying around. The bump isn't as solid, but it's a spacebar, so who cares? Anyway, since this is technically a budget build, I shall now disclose my budget to show solidarity to the proletariat by displaying evidence that I am also poor. The Keychron V6 itself was $79.47. The switches cost $59.57. And the keycaps are $20.28. Can't forget the tape, which is $2. The total price came to around $161.70 for the order. But I sold the original keycaps and switches for $19.18. And that makes the final cost of $142.52 okay. USNA dollars. Now the build would still be possible without my Kofi supporters, because I certainly could go a few days without spending money on food before I starve. But I would still like to thank J. Thomas Moore for his support to the last video, and of course, all of my other supporters. And well, that's how the keyboard was built. It's finished. Now go fuck yourself.